Apache Groovy is an object-oriented programming language used for the JVM platform. This dynamic language has a lot of features, drawing inspiration from Python, Smalltalk, and Ruby. It can be used to orchestrate your pipeline in Jenkins, and it can glue different languages together, meaning that teams in your project can be contributing in different languages. Hi everyone, this is Kavya from Edureka. Welcome to today's session on the Jenkins Groovy tutorial. Now, before we begin, I'd like to address the agenda. Firstly, we will understand what is a Jenkins pipeline, and then we'll discuss the various methods to create a pipeline. Then we'll understand why we need to use the Jenkins pipeline plugin. Then we will also talk about the types of Jenkins pipeline that are available, and then we'll compare declarative pipeline versus scripted pipeline. And finally, we will understand how to create pipeline using Groovy scripts. Kindly take up this time to subscribe to us and do not forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from the Edureka YouTube channel. Also, to learn more about new trending technologies, visit our page, the link to which is given in the description box below. So, without much ado, let's get started. What is a Jenkins pipeline? Now, in Jenkins, a Jenkins pipeline, or you can simply refer it to as pipeline, is a collection of events or jobs which are basically interlinked with one another in a sequence. It is a combination of plugins that support the integration and implementation of continuous delivery pipelines using Jenkins. Now, the events and jobs that I'm talking about is a sequence of events that can happen or occur in a software organization to deliver a particular application. So, in other words, a Jenkins pipeline is a collection of jobs that brings the software from version control into the hands of the end users by using automation tools. It is used to incorporate continuous delivery in our software development workflow. Now, in a Jenkins pipeline, every job has some sort of dependency on at least one or more jobs or events. So basically, in a continuous delivery pipeline in Jenkins, it contains a collection of various states, such as build, deploy, test, release, etc. Now, these jobs that I'm talking about are interlinked with each other. Now, every state has its jobs, which work in a sequence called a continuous delivery pipeline. Now, for all of y'all who don't know what a continuous delivery pipeline is, it is basically an automated expression to show your process for getting software for version control. Thus, every change made in your software goes through a number of complex processes in its manner to being released. It also involves developing the software in a repeatable and reliable manner and progression of the build software through multiple stages of testing and deployment. Now that we know what is a Jenkins pipeline, let us understand the methods to create a pipeline. Now there are two methods. The first method is using the build pipeline plugin. Okay, so now there are various plugins that Jenkins offers. Okay, there are hundreds of plugins that Jenkins offers and one of the plugin that we can use to create a pipeline is the build pipeline plugin. Now, continuous integration can become the centerpiece of your deployment pipeline, orchestrating the promotion of a version of software to quality gates and into production. Now, by extending the concepts of continuous integration, you can create a chain of jobs, each one subjecting your build to quality assurance steps. You can see that you have job one as version control, job two as build, job three as unit test. So, there are various jobs that you build to create your pipeline, right? So now these quality assurance steps may be a combination of manual and automated steps. Now, once a build is passed all of these, it can be automatically deployed into production. That is your final step. Now, in order to better support this process, you can use the build pipeline plugin. This basically gives you the ability to form a chain of jobs based on their upstream or downstream dependencies. Downstream jobs may, as per the default behaviors, be triggered automatically or by a suitable authorized user manually triggering it. The next way to create your pipeline is by using pipeline plugin. Now, this plugin is extremely important. Now, the Jenkins pipeline can be defined by a text file, which is called as Jenkins file. So what really happens here is you just create one job with all of these stages together. So all of these stages interlink together. So the stages are version control, build, unit test, deploy, auto test, etc. So what really happens is you can implement this entire pipeline as code. Okay, so that's the difference between the build pipeline plugin and the pipeline plugin. Here you can implement this pipeline as code and this happens with the help of the Jenkins file. And also this is defined by using a DSL that is a domain specific language. Now with the help of Jenkins files, 
you can write the steps required for running this entire Jenkins pipeline. Now you must be wondering what are the benefits of using this Jenkins files. So the first biggest benefit is that you can make pipelines automatically for all branches and then execute pull requests with just one Jenkins file. So you don't really have to treat all of these jobs separately. So you can review your Jenkins pipeline and the code that is present. Now this is the singular source for your pipeline and can be customized by multiple users. Jenkins file can be defined by using either web user interface or with a Jenkins file. As we've already discussed, Jenkins is a continuous integration server, which has the ability to support the automation of software development processes. You can create several automation jobs with the help of use cases and run them as a Jenkins pipeline. We know this already. So I spoke about some of the benefits of using Jenkins file. Now we will understand the reasons as to why you should use Jenkins pipeline. Now Jenkins pipeline is implemented as a code which allows several users to edit and execute the pipeline process and the pipelines are very robust. So if your server undergoes and very unpredicted restart, the pipeline will be automatically resumed from where you left off. You can also pause the pipeline process and make it wait to continue until there is an input from the particular user. And also Jenkins pipelines support big projects. You can also run many jobs and even use pipelines in a loop. Now that we've learned the different methods to create a pipeline, let's talk about as to why we can use Jenkins pipeline. Now the highlight of Jenkins pipeline is that it offers the feature to define the complete deployment flow through configuration and code. Now it states that all the standard Jenkins jobs can be written manually as an entire script and can also be managed with the version control system. This is a great advantage for people on the developer side. Now it's essentially following the discipline of pipeline as code. Hence, instead of creating multiple jobs for each process, it allows us to code the entire workflow and place it simply in a Jenkins file. Now, some of the reasons that one might consider before using the Jenkins pipelines for Jenkins test automation with Selenium is because it allows you to use a groovy DSL, that is domain specific language, and it helps model easy to complex pipelines as code. And as I've already mentioned, the code is stored in the form of a text file, which is called Jenkins files that can be scanned into source code management. It also supports complex pipelines by adding conditional loops, forks, or joining operations and allowing parallel execution tasks. It also improves user experience by integrating user feedback into the pipeline. It's resilient in terms of Jenkins master unplanned restart. And as I've already mentioned, it can resume from checkpoints saved. And also, as we've already know as to why Jenkins is famous, that is because of its plugins. It can incorporate multiple additional plugins and add-ins. Now that we know as to why we should use Jenkins pipeline, let's move on and check out the types of Jenkins pipeline that are available. There are two different types in which Jenkins pipeline can be constructed and they are the other declarative pipeline and scripted pipeline. Now the declarative pipeline is relatively a very new feature that supports the concept of code pipeline. It basically enables the reading and writing of the pipeline code. Now this code is written within a Jenkins file, which can be tested into a tool such as get for source control. The scripted pipeline on the other hand is a typical method of code writing. Now the Jenkins file is written on the Jenkins user interface instance in this particular pipeline. While both of these pipelines are groovy based, the scripted pipeline uses more strict groovy based syntaxes. And this is because it was the first groovy foundation pipeline that was created for use. Now, as this groovy script was not usually suitable to all the users, it introduced the declarative pipeline to provide a much more simpler and flexible groovy syntax. The declarative pipeline is defined within a pipeline block, while the scripted pipeline is defined within a node block. Now, the declarative pipeline is defined in a pipeline block, while the scripted one is defined within a node block. As I've already mentioned before, the scripted pipeline is a groovy based DSL and it provides greater flexibility and scalability for Jenkins users than the declarative one. So groovy script are not necessarily suitable for all the users. So the declarative pipeline syntax is much more stringent. It needs to use Jenkins predefined DSL structure, which provides a much more simpler and much more assertive syntax for writing Jenkins pipeline. 
Now that we've discussed the types of Jenkins pipeline, let's move ahead and check out the differences between declarative and scripted pipeline. Difference between declarative pipeline and scripted pipeline would definitely be with respect to their syntaxes and their flexibility. Now declarative pipeline is relatively a new feature that supports the pipeline as code concept. And as I've already mentioned before, it makes the pipeline code easier to read and write. Whereas the scripted one is a traditional way of writing the code in this pipeline, the Jenkins file is written on the Jenkins UI instance. So let's move ahead and check out the first difference between them. That is the syntax. The declarative one offers a much more simpler and much more optioned groovy syntax, while the scripted pipeline uses a much stricter groovy based syntax. The next difference is based on the flexibility. The declarative pipeline is much more easier to read and write, whereas the scripted one has a traditional way of writing the code. In terms of programming model, declarative pipeline encourages a declarative programming model, whereas scripted pipelines follows a more imperative programming model. Moving on to the structure, the declarative type imposes limitations to the user with a much more strict and predefined structure, which would be very ideal for simpler continuous delivery pipelines. On the other hand, the scripted type has very few limitations that too with respect to structure and syntax that tend to be defined by Groovy, thus making it ideal for users with more complex requirements. Now that we've discussed the differences between declarative and scripted pipelines, let's move on and learn how to create pipelines using Groovy. So in this part of the session, you'll have to download Jenkins and also you'll have to configure your Git to Jenkins. So these are the prerequisites needed for you to move on and perform this demo. So after you download Jenkins, you will have to download the pipeline plugin, which you've already done. So I'm just going to click on this new item option that's present on my dashboard and I'm just going to enter an item name. So let's name this project as demo and I'm going to click on pipeline. And once I click on pipeline, the OK button will pop up. I'm just going to click OK. And uh, you just get some options here. You get general, build triggers, advanced project options and pipeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down through all of these options and you just scroll down to the pipeline section. And here you can see that there's a definition where you can add your own pipeline script or you can select your pipeline script from source code management. Okay, and currently our source code management is Git. And since I've already configured Git to my Jenkins, I can select my source code management that is Git. So the first option that will turn up is repositories. Here you'll have to specify the repository URL. Okay. Now, before we move on and specify that, I'm just going to quickly switch to my GitHub account. And here you can see that I have my Jenkins file. Okay. I'm just going to click on this Jenkins file and I just have a tiny script, the pipeline script, which I'm just going to explain now. And as you can see that I'm working on Linux, the script is a little different than the Windows script. You can see that we firstly declared pipeline. So in an organization, you have several agents that is acquainted to your particular pipeline. But as of now for this demo, we're just going to specify any agent. And as we've already discussed in the declarative pipeline, we have stages and we have to specify different stages, right? So currently I've just given one stage that is the build stage. You can have release stage, you can have release stage, you can have a deployment stage. You can just build your pipeline as per the needs of your organization. Okay. So, but as of now, I just have one stage that is the build stage and I'm just specified steps for this particular build stage. And here you can see that you can print hello world and you can also print multi-line shell steps works to anything, anything that you'd like to. And I'm just going to quickly switch back to the Git repository. And here you can see a green button that says code and I'm just going to copy this HTTPS link here. I'm going to switch back to my Jenkins and this is where I'm going to paste my repository URL and that's done. And if you go down, you can see there's another option that says branches to build. Okay. As you can see here in the GitHub, my current branch that I am working on is the main branch. So I'm just going to specify that too. It's not the master branch. It's the main branch. Great. And if you scroll down a bit, you can see that there's an option that says script path. Currently my script path is dot Jenkins. That's the file name. So if I just click on that, you can see that this is where our script is currently present. So I'm just going to specify that. 
by default it says Jenkins file you have to change it and once that is done I'm just going to apply and then save okay and now that it's ready we can build it you can see that the build has been executed successfully and if you want to check out the logs you can it says hello world and also it's printed multi shell steps work too so that's great so this is how easy it is to really build a pipeline. You can make the pipeline as long as you'd like to. You can make it as complex as you'd like to. This is just a tiny demo to make you understand how the Jenkins pipeline plugin really works. Now with this, we've come to the end of this session. I hope you had a great time on the session on Jenkins Groovy tutorial. If you have any queries, leave them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time, thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!